Well, for this series of lessons, uh, we uh, asked uh, for suggestions and ideas, and um, you know, mainly we were thinking in terms of tunes to record that people might want to learn. But one of the questions that came up was, how could an American fiddler sound more like an Irish fiddler? Uh, so I'm going to attempt to answer this. I thought it was an interesting question. And probably the place to start would be the bow. Um, the approach and the bowing typically uh, is uh, a softer beginning to the stroke, not quite as bold at the start of the stroke and then we let it swell um, as uh, once the stroke is underway uh, and that that kind of immediately gives the 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 sound a kind of a rhythm you know it swells up and that little push of sound I think is often uh, connected with that word that people often use when they're talking about Irish music, a lilt. So in, instead of a bold uh, attack at the beginning, the stroke is softer at the beginning and swells up. So it's it's kind of natural for us to play something like ah, ah, ah. and right away that that basic gesture gives the the music a kind of a pulse rather than a direct rhythm. So that would be one thing I would. Uh, think about if I was an American fiddler trying to play Irish music. Um, another thing is that we we bow onto the beat a lot of the time rather than starting the beat with a new stroke. Um, so we'd have our pickup note and leading into the beat note and again, it fits with that bow stroke that I've just described. It starts soft for the pickup note. And then it gets stronger when it's time to play the beat note. Uh, whereas most other forms of music, the, the pickup note will be played in a separate bow in order to give the downbeat, the main beat, uh, a full stroke but that isn't uh, normally what's done in Irish music um, and it, it's good for both rails and jigs a, a rail So I'm starting the stroke before the beat. And that's a fairly common thing in Irish music, but I think it's less common in most other styles of fiddle playing. So that would be one thing. Uh, another thing would be the, the ornaments, the rolls. We use them with such regularity that it's definitely a feature of Irish music, but it's not it's not something that you hear only in Irish music. It's just you in in Irish music they're used a lot, um, and getting familiar with those uh, that sound and the rhythmic effect of that sound. Any fiddler coming at this Irish music from another style would need to pay attention to, um, and I think again. <coughs> As we play the role, the bow tends to swell. Um, 
loop so it's like the tail end of the roll that is strongest not the not the start of it not the attack at the start of it it's the swell towards the end of the roll that is most uh, noticeable uh, and I think uh, most players coming from another style would put most of the emphasis on the beginning of the roll which uh, makes it sound a little different uh, the next thing then would be the rhythms the rhythms are uh, particular um, reels are fairly close to uh, things that you hear in lots of other styles of music but jigs um, a lot of people I've met have trouble with jigs um, and I think the problem is if you see it written down you get the impression that each bar has six notes that are the same length uh, you know it's written down as six eight and you you get the you know if you're reading it you get the idea that it goes <laughs> they're all even but they're not the f the first one I think is a bit longer and the second one is a bit shorter so instead of playing you play so I think it's the first one is a bit longer the second one is a bit shorter and then the third one is about where it ought to be but having said that, the first one is a bit longer, the second one's a bit shorter, but it's not like the f the first note is long enough to become the next note up. It's not a case of and it's not it's kind of halfway between the two. So that's something else to bear in mind. And to go back to the rails, we we it, there are four four tunes, um, and typically you would emphasise the one and the three one two three four one two three four in the four four tune, but often we steer away from that and we emphasize the two and the four so it'd be one two three four one two three four um and a, you know an example kind of a gross example but you know, i'm exaggerating it but instead of playing one two three four instead of emphasizing the one and the three we would tend to lessen those ones and threes and heighten the twos and fours so it's not a case of the one uh, is now not very strong and the two is very strong it's that the one isn't as strong as it ought to be and the two is a little bit stronger than it ought to be so it sticks out but it's because you don't expect it to be that strong but it's still not a really big emphasis on it uh, it's just more prominent than you'd expect when we come to the end of a passage we often build it up and then when we get to the start we drop it drop the volume somehow dropping the the volume often increases the energy um, but most people uh, have a tendency um, to emphasize the beginning and then let it tail out towards the end uh, but in Irish music you often hear that reversed it builds up towards the end then that section starts again and there's a drop in volume so uh, something like um, like in this series 
we uh, went through a tune called Paddy's Return um, and I was talking about that very thing building up the last few notes of the section so when you go back and start the section again uh, you can actually drop the volume so it would be something like uh, Whereas most people's tendency would maybe to play whereas we often play so the lead into the beginning is strong but the beginning itself is quite soft um, and you hear that often and again not all the time but often enough that it, it, it changes the balance, it has an effect um, that you don't hear often in other forms of music. Um, we also have uh, grace notes, this habit of bowing through two notes instead of detaching the stroke. So instead of going, we just have one stroke for the two notes and divide them up by using a grace note. Instead of going like those two B's, we'd probably play them. So it's just one stroke, and we define the second one, the one that's carrying the beat. We draw attention to it with the grace note, not with the bow, which is kind of an unusual way of going about it. If you'd like to follow up with this uh, further, you know, the, uh, some of the tutorials uh, have dealt with these techniques in particular. Um, these words like rolls and grace notes and and the bowing ideas, um, the, there is a, a tutorial dedicated specifically to the ornaments, to the rolls and grace notes and triplets and there's a, another one um, that deals specifically with some of the bowing ideas so uh, if the, uh, some of what I've just said is a little bit vague to you we deal with them in much more specific detail in those uh, tutorials that are dedicated to those particular techniques you might find that useful too so there are a few things that you might find helpful. Um, I'm sure there are others, um, but that's the best I can come up with right now. So I hope that's been helpful.